Hi, you are watching. The story begins in a cozy home that doubled as a flower shop. Here we meet our protagonist, who was grappling with the most challenging test of his life, studying. However, nothing seemed to stick in his head. It wasn't that he was lazy, he just happened to possess a brain the size of a pea. Even his own mother couldn't quite believe the predicament. She watched her child, already slacking off within a mere five minutes of opening a book. And so, just like parents tend to do, she couldn't resist the urge to make comparisons. Her sister's child, Young Wang, was diligently attending cram school and putting in the hard work already. Meanwhile, her own son seemed to have perfected the art of slacking to a degree that could be considered professional. Unable to stand this display of demotivation any longer, she decided to put him to work, instructing him to hang the plant baskets on the shelves and attempt to make him useful at least. But she knew her child's tendencies all too well, so before he could start, she reminded him to tie those ropes securely. Otherwise, a strong wind could spell catastrophe for the unsuspecting passerby. But just like most kids, Wu Song had a unique blend of laziness and sheer lack of brain power. Immediately began complaining, as he couldn't understand why the hell were these plants inside in the first place, since everyone knows plants need sunlight and water. So, putting them up on these shelves is just a whole lot of trouble for him and the plant. Luckily for him, his mother already worn out by his previous antics, so she had neither the energy nor the inclination to respond to this ungrateful failure. To her surprise, as Wu Song attempted to hang the plant, it became evident that his laziness knew no bounds. In a moment of what could only be described as sheer absurdity, he wished he could be a plant. After all, all they did was bask in the sun, drink water, and grow. His mother, however, is very vigilant. And so she had heard all of this, and she even noticed that he hadn't done what she had specifically told him to do. It then became clear that she couldn't even rely on her failure with a simple task. And so she told him to come down and scold his ass for being this disgustingly useless. And she bets that even if he becomes a plant, he would still be a failure, given that he had an entire set of limbs and yet remained this bewilderingly useless. And just like what any kid would do, he decided to make a quick exit from their house, fleeing the relentless barrage of his mother's chatter. And as he strolled along, he couldn't resist a sarcastic remark about how his mother's words seemed to flow endlessly, much like a never-ending stream from a pea shooter. However, little did he knew, he was about to learn the hard way why it's crucial to secure potted plants properly. As the universe would have it, a certain potted plant decided to take on the role of Truk Kun, as it had also smelled someone who is in need to be isekai so it made a daring escape on its porch. And just as intended, the unsuspecting passerby, which is Wu Song, found himself in the wrong place at the wrong time. As the aforementioned plant pot made a direct hit, rendering him lifeless on the ground, his head broken and is now bleeding profusely. And in the midst of this calamity, life started flashing before his eyes, particularly when he was about to eat the mouth-watering dishes his mother had masterfully crafted. However, as soon as he took a bite, he was in shock to witness that all those delicious food turned into dirt, which he instantly spit out. But with this, he soon realized that it was all just a dream. And so he promptly opens his eyes, only to find himself in a total darkness, and his limbs inexplicably felt as though they'd been tied up. But despite the surreal and disorienting circumstances, an oddly appetizing aroma tantalized his senses, which was something going for him at the least. However, it was still dark as heck. Therefore, as soon as a faint light revealed itself, he didn't hesitate to follow it. And just like that, a new sprout emerged from the earth, reaching hungrily toward the warm sun, unexpectedly. This sprout was none other than Wu Song's new form, and soon he noticed his petal-covered physique as well. With this, shock blossomed across his face, but not even a moment passed. He was petrified to realize that his transformation isn't limited to his looks, as he noticed that he was now surrounded by tall grass everywhere, the sun looking quite rather tasty, and all the flowers were now quite literally his neighbors. With this, it was fucking evident that he totally became a flower, which in turn made Wu Song's anger flared as he demanded answers. And so, he retraced his memories to the last thing he could recall, a rather gruesome demise involving an improperly secured flower pot. And as the pieces of this peculiar puzzle clicked into place, he arrived at the utterly bizarre conclusion that life did him dirty. And the reason behind his reincarnation as a plant seemed to stem from his own frequently cracked jokes about wanting to lead the simple life of a plant, which was kind of unexpected to say the least. And so he cried to the almighty being and clarified that he was merely kidding and was just casually talking about how he wants to become a plant. So there was no reason for him to take it seriously. Therefore, he would be eternally grateful if he do him a favor and just quickly change him back. But this grief of his abruptly stopped as a realization struck him, similar to the reborn protagonists he'd read about in countless novels. 
they typically received systems and embarked on paths to godhood. And given his current circumstances, it wasn't too far-fetched to assume that he might also have a system of his own. With this in mind, he began shouting for his own system to appear, startling every other plant nearby. However, he didn't care, as he is experiencing the stages of grief right now. And after a week of this had passed by, he has come to accept his fate. It appeared there was no system coming to his aid, and he was, in fact, just an ordinary plant. But since he is now at the acceptance stage, he just looked on the bright side of things, and so he was thankful that he hadn't become something worse, like some blade of grass. Furthermore, the dark earth he had chosen to sprout in was pretty good. It was rich in nutrients, fragrant, and even tasted delicious. So it seems like he was going to grow well in this environment. The only downside was the crowded space. This was to be expected, due to the fertile soil. But he soon discovered that having neighbors was more challenging than he'd initially assumed. They were all opportunistic bastards and had outgrown him. And now, they were hogging all the sunlight. While he on the other hand was all deprived of it. And so he tried to reason with them, reminding them that they were of the same species and didn't need to be so cruel. However, they were just plants. They couldn't help but stay put. With this, Wu Song noticed the similarities between his current situation and his previous life. It felt like deja vu, reminiscent of how everyone in his class used to one-up each other while he underperformed. However, his current predicament was more about survival, and he wasn't going to let anyone get in his way. And so he did his best to capture some sunlight, and his efforts were successful, as he could finally absorb his daily dose of vitamins. And with no more flowers blocking his view, he noticed a silhouette in the distance. Upon closer inspection, he was surprised to discover it was a llama, and this was the first time he had seen such a beautiful creature. Because in his previous life, his parents were always busy and never took him to the zoo, so this creature seemed more like a mythical beast to him than any creature from his imagination. Furthermore, it was hella cute, so he was overjoyed to witness it up close. However, a grim realization suddenly struck him. He remembered that this cute creature was a herbivore, so getting closer could only mean one thing. It was going to eat the plants. And just as he suspected, the llama went straight down and opened its mouth to grab a bite. And since he was just a flower, running away wasn't an option. So, he ducked, hoping to lower his chances of being eaten. Luckily, this maneuver was enough and the llama only got the first thing its tongue had touched. Fortunately, it didn't go for another round. It seemed that flowers and plants weren't to its taste, and so Wu Song could live for another day. However, to his surprise, the llama had a few tricks up its cheeks, as it decided to take a massive dump right in front of him. And upon closer inspection, another grim realization dawned on him, and he could have continued living without knowing it, but it was too late now as he realized that the dark dirt he had sprouted in wasn't actually dirt, but a massive dung all along. In response, he couldn't help but throw up and cursed vehemently. He couldn't believe that even after learning this fact, he still thought that this feces tasted good and smelled delicious. While it might not be unreasonable for a plant to feel this way, he was a former human, and to him, it was still feces. So his emotions were mixed between disgust and pleasure. A few days later, all the flowers bloomed simultaneously, including Wu Song. However, it became apparent that his development was quite different from the rest. He had fangs, and the other flowers looked at him as if they'd seen a devil. Luckily, a strange tablet materialized in front of him, revealing the reason for their strange looks. It turned out he had transformed into an ugly ass plant with spikes everywhere. This revelation shocked him. He couldn't believe he had turned into a big-mouthed creature, reminiscent of a monster from a childhood video game. Now he understood why everyone regarded him strangely. However, his focus quickly shifted back to a mysterious mirror that had suddenly appeared before him, piquing his curiosity. He reached out to touch it, but this action of his only prompted it to disappear into thin air, just like how it appeared. But to his surprise, it had now integrated within him, as a system interface popped up, indicating that it had detected he had blossomed and entered the juvenile stage. As a result, the flower system had been automatically activated, and seeing all of this unfold before his eyes made him very ecstatic. As this was what he had been searching for over the past couple of weeks, but before he could celebrate further, a friendly system sprite named Ruhua introduced itself and showed Wu Song his status panel, only to reveal to him that his skills were trash, as his only active skill is swallow. Go, 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 go. Furthermore, they did him dirty with how the system described him, referring to him as a big-mouthed flower who was planted in alpaca dung, 
and an ugly-ass plant who doesn't have the ability to defend itself. With this, he couldn't help but question if this was a mistake, as he thought he would be dominating the world right now, but it seemed like he was on the path to become a laughingstock instead. But before he could complain any further, his attention was diverted to another system interface that informed him he had received evolution points by sunbathing for a minute, as well as additional points for absorbing minerals from the soil and moisture. And since he wasn't a stranger to this kind of trope, he instantly knew that these evolution points could be used to upgrade and strengthen himself. And so excitement filled him once again, and the fact that his evolution points just kept flowing in at a rapid rate made him more delighted than ever before. And just like that, he quickly gained 100 evolution points without even moving from his spot, which obviously he doesn't have any other choice, being a plant of course. However, this feat can't be seen anywhere else, so he was thrilled with the system he had, as it seemed more like a cheat than anything he had read about in novels. And with this cheat system helping him, he was confident that he could outgrow the other flowers competing for sunlight. And so, he summoned Ruhua to show the others what he meant prompting Ruhua to immediately approach him and presented different options for using his 100 evolution points. He could choose to upgrade one of these six core parts, such as flowers, stems, leaves, roots, fruits, or seeds. But since he aimed to grow taller than the others, he immediately chose to upgrade his stems. After confirming, the process was a success, and his height increased by 3 millimeters, which wasn't noticeable at all. Even the other flowers were confused and are experiencing a second-hand embarrassment from looking at this ugly plant. With this Wu Song immediately lashed out to Ruhua, asking what kind of garbage system is this to scam him like this. He thought he was good, but it turns out it was all disappointment. To which Ruhua just brushes it off, and explained to him that 100 evolution points that were used was just for him to try out its effects, as it was only the first evolution after all. So if the effects is too little for him, he could just accumulate more, and use them to further strengthen his stems. However, Wu Song was already aware that with each level increase, the required points would also increase. So at this rate, it would take longer to surpass his competitors, and he wasn't known for being a hard worker, so this realization greatly dwindled his motivation. And just when he thought his day couldn't get any worse, a wasp wandered near Wu Song, and since he was in a bad mood, he tried to tell it to leave him be. However, this wasp didn't respect his wishes at all, continuing to fly around him. With this, he knew he couldn't let this disrespect slide, so he used his vines to smack it as hard as he could to get the message across. But little did Wu Song know, this wasp was even dumber than he was, as it mistook his mouth for the sweet nectar of a flower, and so it didn't hesitate to enter, which shocked him. And so he panicked, as he had experienced life for 17 years but had never eaten raw food, let alone a giant wasp. So he tried his best to get it out of his mouth, but it seemed too late. He could already taste it, and he was surprised to realize that it didn't taste bad. In fact, he kind of liked it, which was reasonable because he sort of liked the taste of soil as well. This also made him wonder if plants had a sense of taste. But before he could ponder this further, his train of thought was interrupted by Ruhua, appearing before him once again. This time, Ruhua's demeanor was more uplifting than before, as he congratulated Wu Song for completing his first feast, and rewarded him with a blind box treasure chest which could contain random rewards like a large number of evolution points, plant genes, and more. However, it required 10,000 evolution points to open, which seemed like an absurd amount. With this, Wu Song suddenly felt that the rate at which he was gaining evolution points was no longer great. However, since he wasn't going anywhere anytime soon, he decided to save some points to open it. And so, five excruciating days of working hard to get the most out of bathing in the sun had passed, he finally accumulated 10,000 points. And therefore, he didn't hesitate to ask Ruhua to open the chest immediately, which Ruhua was happy to do. Luckily, inside the treasure chest was a B-level vine gene that could be integrated into his stems. Wu Song was shocked to see it, as he realized that he could become the legendary tentacle monster. Furthermore, this fusion could make him significantly stronger and open up many opportunities, so he didn't hesitate to fuse with it. With this, a sudden beam of light illuminated towards his stem, and soon after, the fusion has been completed, and therefore he could now transform his stems into vines to whip his opponents hard, or even tie them up playfully, which Wu Song was enjoying this more than he should, as he even declared that he would like to be called a tentacle monster from here then on. Wu Song was happy with this turn of events. The vine he had now was as flexible as his own fingers, 
and he could even make shapes and faces with it. Even the other plants around him were amazed. And according to the skill description, if he leveled up this skill in the future, he could make the vines burrow out of the ground and surprise attack his opponents, just like other tentacle monsters in the novels. So, the next time the wasp came near, he would be more than glad to make it his meal. And just as he wished, another wasp entered his vicinity, and so he didn't hesitate to whip out his long brown vines to practice his new skill on the wasp, which he had personally named this skill the lightning whip, as he was expecting some impressive results. However, he soon faced the harsh reality that his equipment ain't that long, and it couldn't be any longer, as it was already fully stretched out. So, he had no choice but to retract his tentacles, change his tactic, and just wait for the wasp to come closer. And while he is at it, he was wondering if enhance means that the vines can be made thicker and longer in the future. And as he was in deep thought, the hornet was slyly trying to get closer to him, to annoy him even more, unaware that it was walking right into Wu Song's trap. And so without a moment's hesitation, Wu Song whipped out his brown vine again, this time with more vigor, confident that he wouldn't miss. But my boy is really taking L's one after the other, because even before his stem could touch the wasp, another creature swooped in and stole his prey. This left Wu Song in shock and disbelief, questioning the bizarre reality he found himself in. His efforts were all in vain because of some lizard. With this, he was furious, and so he launched an attack on that stealing son of a gun, grabbing its tail tight, since he decided to eat this lizard instead. So even though it tries its best to run away, Wu Song wouldn't let that happen. He used all his strength to pull the lizard toward him. However, he had forgotten an important detail about lizards. They have the ability to detach their own tails. As soon as the lizard did this, his tentacle backfired at Wu Song, disorienting him for a moment, which gave the lizard the opportunity to escape, while Wu Song decided to let the lizard go as he lacked the ability to chase it. However, he resolved to be prepared if he encountered the lizard again, and on the brighter side of things, he did have the lizard's tail to eat, which was better than nothing. So, he decided to consume it, hoping something would happen, but, to his dismay, only silence followed. As the system didn't give any prompts, at all. So it appeared that he could only get treasure chest rewards by devouring a whole living creature. With this, Wu Song was now searching for anything to eat, but now he noticed that there were very few insects here, not even a fly can be seen from miles away. And the only thing that seemed to be plentiful in this place was piles of dung, and so it took him one week to find another bug, which he didn't hesitate to devour, only to discover that it was a dung beetle all along. This really pushed him into insanity, as he couldn't help but wonder why. Of all things it had to be that kind of beetle. He felt like the world was making fun of him. However, stuck in a dung pile as a flower there was little he could do about it. So, he chose to forget about raging and accept his fate, and just focus on the bright side of things once more, putting all his attention on the treasure chest, eagerly awaiting what he would get only to receive an evolution points again, but fortunately, the system isn't as cruel, as it gave him double the amount every time, otherwise he would be in deep shit physically and figuratively. Still, his desperation grew, so he questioned Ruhua about whether he needed to devour a caterpillar or a fly to develop another gene, which he wouldn't mind and will gladly eat it for him if that was the case. But unfortunately, it wasn't what he wanted, as Ruhua clarified that it doesn't work like that, as he is just a plant system, not a bizarre eating system where the weirder things he eat the better result he would get, and the way he responded is quite really irritating in the eyes. Luckily, the spotlight was diverted towards the rustling of the bushes, and to Wu Song's surprise, it was the stealing lizard. It had come back for another round, which he was more than glad to settle the score, whipping out his tentacle once again. But Wu Song just couldn't catch a break, as it revealed to him that the lizard is actually running away from something, and that something was a giant fucking toad, a whole lot bigger than Wu Song, and just like what every toad can do, this motherfucker could leap, shocking Wu Song entirely. But my boy ain't a pushover either, he can't just let this big daddy do what it wanted, especially when he didn't do anything, as the toad was just chasing the little lizard earlier, so there wasn't any reason why it is attacking him right now unless it doesn't respect him just because of the size difference, which Wu Song couldn't let such things slide, and so he brought the smoke to the toad, whipping its meat as hard as he could. He even made the toad flip, with how powerful he whipped up his thing. However, this wasn't enough, as the toad just easily recovered, and was now looking him like a snack. But Wu Song ain't playing around either, he wouldn't just stand there and wait for it to attack, and so he launched a nasty left hook, but because the toad wasn't in the air like last time, has a steady footing, 
and it already activated its own skill turning its skin to stone, and therefore it had received Wu Song's attack like it was nothing, and then took the opportunity to grab his vines, surprising Wu Song yet again, as he didn't expect this toad to be more intelligent than it looked, and unfortunately for him, this toad had another trick up its sleeves, as it can use its tongue freely, so it wrapped around Wu Song quite easily, which confused Wu Song at first, but as soon as it tugged him hard, he realized that this fucker is actually trying to uproot him on the spot. And as a plant, this hurts like hell, like his body is going to be torn apart, and it hurts him so much that he was thinking that this must be a punishment from God, because in the past he would sometimes take advantage of the flower and plants on the wild grass to vent his anger. But feeling sorry about it now isn't helping his case, as he was close to be fully uprooted by the toad, and he knows that it will be over once he is fully uprooted, as he could feel, his life is draining away cold and unforgiving, which he didn't expect would happen so soon as he reincarnated. But to his surprise, before he could come to that conclusion, he noticed the yellow lizard was now up a branch and is about to do something. Unexpectedly, it then signaled him to keep quiet, which surprised him even more, as he wondered what kind of world he had traveled to, where all the little animal here are so intelligent. And just like that, the lizard soon took action, jumping on the toad's face, and this lizard isn't to be messed with, as it ain't planning to deal some light work. This lizard wanted to see some blood, so it opens its jaws wide, and munched one of the toad's eyes, dealing a significant blow, as blood come gushing out right after, and therefore the toad had no choice but to let go of Wu Song, and crashed on the ground to get the lizard off of him, which was successful, but now it had opened an opportunity for Wu Song to strike, which Wu Song didn't think twice to deliver, wrapping his vines on the toad, and beat that toad senseless, and my boy was straight savage as well, as he clapped them cheeks, like how Hulk pound the shit out of Loki. And the disrespect was real on this one. And he ain't even showing any sign of stopping. Even for a bit. But little did he knew. This toad was enjoying this more than he should have. As it involuntarily lets out some frog juices everywhere. But because of this. It had lubricated Wu Song's thick ass vines. And so this helped the toad to slip the fuck up. Even Wu Song was flabbergasted of how naughty this toad was. But he can't do nothing no more. As this toad was also fast on his feet. Dipping out like he was dodging child support. Unfortunately for it, Wu Song already got a good look at him, so he better not think even for a bit to appear in front of him again, cause he promises to clap those cheeks as soon as he got a glimpse of him. However, this event also reminded Wu Song of how fragile the life of a plant is, so he was wishing to become a human again. But before he could sulk even more, the lizard appeared before him, which confused Wu Song at first, but the way it was bowing its head could only mean that it is asking for forgiveness, but he wouldn't just forgive it that easily as the lizard is the one who brought the toad in the first place. And so the lizard decided to show him its sincerity, fixing the soil he was standing on like how it was used to be, with this, and the fact that it also helped him get rid of the toad. Wu Song forgave the lizard, which in turn made it smile and make a cute sound, surprising Wu Song yet again, as he can't believe this lizard could be this intelligent. The fact that it could use the environment to deal with enemies, and it also know how to help plants cultivate soil, was more than proof that it was more intelligent than a simple lizard, and so this made him wonder if it was normal for it to be able to understand what he says, or if he is even speaking human language or flower or animal language for that matter. But before he could find some answers to his question, he was in shock to see that the lizard is about to leave just like that, and since this is the first friendly interaction he had made after reincarnating, he wouldn't just let it leave without saying goodbye. However, it seems like it doesn't mind it at all as it just continued to strut away, this made Wu Song disappointed as he thought he had found a friend to chat with in this unfamiliar place. To his surprise, the lizard abruptly stopped. It turns out that it took notice of a bug near its vicinity, which it didn't hesitate to grab, and then it immediately went back to Wu Song, while Wu Song on the other hand is sweating like crazy, as he was more than worried what it was trying to do next. And just like that, it whips out its tongue close to him, showing to Wu Song the bug that it had caught, and seeing that Wu Song's confused face, as he couldn't grasp what it wants to convey. The lizard promptly pointed to the bug, signaling Wu Song to eat it, which perplexed him immediately, as he couldn't just eat something that had came out from the mouth of anyone. He ain't about that life. However, the lizard seemed to be genuine about what it wants, as it warmly smiles while still offering him the bug, and with how cute it looked. He couldn't resist its offer. However, he wasn't willing to eat directly from the lizard's mouth, so he signaled to the lizard to put down the beetle, and he would feed himself. But, the lizard remained stubborn. In the end, he decided to go for it, reminding himself that he had already eaten a dung beetle before. So a little lizard saliva shouldn't be a problem. With this, 
he had received another treasure chest, but before they could open it, Ruhua noticed the little lizard, which Wu Song noticed his confused look, and so he explained to Ruhua that this little fella is the one responsible for this new treasure chest, and so he would also like to give him the honors to open the treasure box as a meeting gift to signify their friendship, which the lizard was clueless on what to do with a chest, as it was a lizard after all, and noticing the blank stare of the lizard, Wu Song realized that he had overestimated its IQ, so he instructed it on what to do next, which the lizard was confused at first, but luckily it still tried its best to respond, which was just enough for them. Unfortunately, Wu Song received the same skill as before, but the system isn't so cheap to make this a useless duplicate. Instead, it gave him two options to choose from. First is that he could use it to upgrade his original vines, while the other choice is to use it to add a new vine. This made Wu Song very delighted. And so before he could choose, he thanked the lizard for being this lucky. After that, he thinks hard before deciding what to choose from those two options. And the fact that he was almost uprooted by the toad because there were too few vines, he made up his mind and decided to add a new vine, to which Ruhua gladly delivered, waving his wand, which then covered Wusong with the nature's aura to evolve Wusong once again. However, it seems that this guy isn't cutting him some slack at all, as he was given a smaller vine than he had expected, which made him look like a deformed lobster with this thing. So he promptly asks Ruhua what the f*** is wrong with him, to which Ruhua casually brushes it off just like before, telling him that what he gave him is only natural, as there are no shortcuts after all. And he had also accumulated a lot of evolution points, so instead of complaining, he should just start his hunt again, so that he could witness the thickness and length that he wanted. Wu Song acquired yet another seemingly useless skill from the unhelpful system, adding to the frustration, the system fairy, Ruhua proved to be of little assistance, casually dismissing his concerns, fed up with the game. Wu Song adopted a serious tone and asked Ruhua if the system could be more serious, to which Ruhua nonchalantly responded that it had always been serious, making things much worse. But recognizing that he can't do anything to change the system's behavior, Wu Song decided to let go of the frustration, as he couldn't be bothered to deal with such a seemingly useless system. And so, he went on to just make use of the resources at his disposal, particularly the yellow lizard beside him, considering that he had assisted the lizard in chasing away the big bullfrog earlier. He hoped that the little lizard would express its gratitude by willingly providing him with food. In return, he contemplated offering the lizard words of praise, a gentle pat on the head, and a promise of protection, under the condition that it caught bugs for him every day, which he believes that it seemed like a generous offer especially given his limited mobility and the constrained range of his vines. Having a mobile partner to assist in bug catching would undoubtedly accelerate his leveling up process. However, to his surprise, the yellow lizard remained unimpressed by his proposition of protection. It exhibited a stern expression, appearing unaffected by his attempt at what seemed like an obvious scam. And so, Wu Song promptly clarified to the lizard that catching bugs wasn't solely for his benefit. Rather, the faster he leveled up, the more security he could offer in return. This explanation seemed to resonate with the lizard, as reflected in the subtle change in its expression. It became evident that the deal had been sealed, prompting Wu Song to breathe a sigh of relief. Now officially allies, Wu Song wasted no time and asked the yellow lizard if he could refer to it as Little Yellow from now on. However, the lizard's expression twisted into one of disdain at the suggestion, provoking irritation from Wu Song. With this, he argued that he shouldn't be blamed for the naming, emphasizing that it was the lizard's poop-colored appearance that inspired the name. And Wu Song claims that the little lizard should feel honored to be given a name from him, since he was a top student in the high school rocket class back in the day, which was obviously a lie, considering he is a lazy individual before he reincarnated. A few days later, a system interface popped up, congratulating Wu Song for obtaining the B rank, Kenker Plant Gene, which excited Wu Song, as this was a new plant gene, all new to him, he doesn't even know what it does. But because of this, he impulsively decided to fuse it without much contemplation, which Ruhua eagerly assisted, wielding his wand to facilitate the fusion process. To Wu Song's disappointment, the post-fusion revelation disclosed that this new seed enabled him to spit out thorny Kang air, providing opponents with an unexpected full-body massage, and the refreshing taste of his thorny balls would be unforgettable, which only deepened the worries of Wu Song within him fearing that spitting out these thorny balls might inadvertently harm him, which Ruhua just casually brushes it off once again. He even flicked a booger toward Wu Song, assuring him that widening his mouth a bit and making a retching sound would ensure a smooth expulsion, likening it to a simple act like picking one's nose, which only made Wu Song pissed with Ruhua a little bit more. But since he needed him to survive, he swallowed his pride and just moved on, 
and proceeded to practice his skill. And just like what Ruhua told him to do, he successfully launched those balls in sequence. But to his dismay, although it's not an intense pain of a cut throat, his throat feels scorched from the scratching. Which Ruhua brushes it off yet again, telling him about great power comes at a cost bullshit. This bitch even pissed me off. Like this guy is super unlikable with its ugly ass way of answering things. And the way this stupid ass always pick on his boogers is really irritating. Ricky, when I catch you, Ricky? Ricky, when I catch you, Ricky? Ricky, when I catch you, Ricky, you gonna wake up, bro? Cause you been hiding, bro. But I digress. Wu Song noticed how the Kanger looks quite sharp, but holding it with his vines doesn't hurt at all. With this, his face shines again with joy, as he realized that it is because his vines became tough and thick after upgrading. In that case, he can unleash his creativity in handling this balls. With this in mind, he suddenly got a bold idea. Why are we still here? Just to suffer? So he instructed Little Yellow to get close and hold a dried leaf for him and stand right around the corner, which Little Yellow was initially hesitant. But seeing that Wu Song won't let him rest without doing so, it just followed with Wu Song's antics, while still remaining vigilant, because who knows what his friend is trying to cook with that stupid brain of his. And now that he was in a distance, Little Yellow lifted up the leaf that was given to him, which Wu Song didn't hesitate to use everything he got, to hurl his kanger towards his lizard companion, which not only missed, but also severed Little Yellow's tail, making Little Yellow a little nervous on what it got itself into. However, before it could even leave, Wu Song was pissed on seeing that face of his looking down on him, and so he hurled with all his might all the remaining kanger towards Little Yellow. But much like before, he was shooting blanks, as he missed so drastically, that he even made it look like it was intentional. Still, with the pride that he has, he began to believe that his performance was okay, and that he will just need to practice diligently to surely improve his aim. Days later, Little Yellow diligently carried out its daily routine of hunting bugs in the wild. Approaching a tree, it skillfully bashed its head against it, extracting a mysterious liquid that it collected in a bowl. Eager to share its findings, Little Yellow hurried back to Wu Song, who, true to his lazy nature, was idly attempting to satisfy his hunger by catching small bugs with his vines. While Wu Song's attempts at self-sufficiency proved unsatisfactory, he eagerly awaited Little Yellow's return with hopes of a more substantial meal. Much to his delight, Little Yellow reappeared, bowl in hand. Wu Song commended the lizard for its apparent intelligence, noting its quick adaptation to using a bowl for water retrieval. A significant improvement from its previous method of directly feeding water from its mouth. However, Wu Song recognized that there was still room for improvement, as Little Yellow continued to store the bugs it caught in its mouth. Seizing the opportunity for a teaching moment, Wu Song suggested that the next time Little Yellow hunted bugs, it should find tree bark to store them. Not only would this be more hygienic, but it would also mark a further step towards Little Yellow's growth and adaptability. After that was all cleared up, it was about time to eat the bugs that was in front of him. With this, Ruhua appeared yet again on top of the blind box which Wu Song was yet to open using 10,000 evolution points. But since he doesn't want to deal with Ruhua's stupidity, he brushes it off and saved it for later. After that, he asks Little Yellow to fetch him some water in order to help himself grow more vigorously. After a few moments later, he found himself delighted by the laid-back life he had embraced. This was the leisurely existence he had always yearned for, where food and water were effortlessly provided, and he could casually enjoy playing with his balls. During this time, he seized the opportunity to practice his aim, hurling countless kanger towards Little Yellow. But despite dedicating ample time to refining his shot, none of the projectiles managed to hit the target. However, with plenty of time on their hands, the slow improvement in his aim seemed inconsequential. Unbeknownst to them, the bullfrog they had defeated earlier was stealthily observing from the bushes, patiently waiting for the opportune moment to strike. When Little Yellow ventured close to collect the scattered kanger, the bullfrog seized the chance and swiftly snatched him, devouring him on the spot. Witnessing this absurd and tragic event unfold before his eyes, Wu Song was immediately consumed by rage. Inside the stomach of the bullfrog, Little Yellow struggled to maintain its footing on the slimy, slippery surfaces. Despite the challenging conditions, it wasn't about to passively slide through the digestive journey of the toad's insides. And so, with resourcefulness and determination, Little Yellow used the thorny balls it had collected earlier, making the bullfrog immediately activated its gag reflex, inadvertently vomiting Little Yellow in an instant. Even Wu Song found himself taken aback by this turn of events. However, 
In Wu Song's peculiar logic, he deduced that Little Yellow must taste so repulsive that the bullfrog couldn't stomach the lizard. But the fact the thorny balls was just beside Little Yellow was more than a miracle that he can't put the pieces together to make a conclusion. And it seems like his brain was even doing some mental gymnastics right now. As he drew a connection between this event to a video he once watched of a toad swallowing a farting bug, which it also subsequently spat out. Which also made Wu Song speculate that toads might eat something poisonous and regurgitate their stomach contents to cleanse it. But since Little Yellow lacked such an ability, Wu Song finally arrived at a somewhat plausible explanation. And that it was because his lizard buddy is holding the kanger. With this, he promptly signaled for Little Yellow to come over and share some of the Kong air, which the poor Little Yellow lizard exerted itself, hastening to reach Wu Song as quickly as possible. However, the toad, having recovered from its earlier bout of vomiting, was once again consumed by rage. With determination in its eyes, the toad leapt towards Little Yellow, aiming to devour it once more. But Wu Song was unwilling to allow a repeat of the incident, swiftly deployed his brown vine, attacking the toad with all his might, intent on ending the toad's threat. However, this huge mofo was really fast for its own size. Just like before, it just casually leaped to the side to avoid Wu Song's attack, and it even stomped on one of his vines to make it useless. After that, it confidently launched an attack toward Wu Song to uproot him once again, but suddenly it changes its mind halfway through its attack, as it realized something was amiss as the little plant he was about to uproot was just standing there and laughing. Menacingly, Wu Song later then revealed to it that the vine it was standing on was already strong enough to lift it off the ground. With this unexpected turn of events, the tables had instantly shifted, and the toad found itself ensnared in the trap set by Wu Song. Despite having no other choice, the toad exerted all its efforts, using its weight to resist Wu Song's attempt to lift it off the ground. However, Wu Song's thick, juiced-up vines proved overpowering, rendering the toad's resistance futile. Inevitably, the toad found itself separated from its original position, and as before, Wu Song proceeded to unleash a relentless assault on the defeated amphibian. Undeterred, the toad revealed another defensive tactic, petrifying itself to absorb Wu Song's attacks. This, however, was a futile attempt to delay the inevitable defeat, but seeing that it doesn't have a clue yet, Wu Song helped it see the reality it now faced by giving it a math problem. Wu Song posed the question, if he spat out five kanger every day for 10 days, what would be the total count? Perplexed by the arithmetic challenge and being a toad with no knowledge of math, the toad struggled to respond, and it wasn't helping that he was held captive by the seemingly unhinged Wu Song. So without much choice, it made futile attempts to free itself from Wu Song's vines. In response, Wu Song continued his assault, smashing the toad onto the thorny kanger until he was satisfied, with Little Yellow reluctantly witnessing the brutality unfold. After a while, Wu Song observed that the toad's lively bouncing had diminished significantly, indicating that it had succumbed to its injuries. This realization brought a sense of delight to Wu Song, having successfully taken down such a formidable adversary. What surprised him even more was the efficacy of the Thorny Kong Air, which had proven instrumental in dispatching enemies at a much faster rate. Without this unique ability, he might not have had the opportunity to overcome such a sizable foe. Recognizing the significance of this successful hunt for both him and Little Yellow, Wu Song called out to his lizard companion and generously shared the meat harvested from the defeated toad, Little Yellow. Initially traumatized by the intense battle, experienced a swift change in demeanor. The offer of the delicious toad meat instantly brightened its spirits, as it seemed like his friend that he knew off didn't change that much towards him. And therefore, they feasted on the fruits of their successful hunt together. But as they were feasting, Wu Song couldn't help but wonder if the system will give a box for eating it with his comrade, because in his previous experience, he didn't get a box for eating Little Yellow's tail earlier. To his astonishment, the system not only rewarded him with one box, but bestowed upon him two. Intrigued by this unexpected bounty, he immediately queried Ruhua about the inconsistency, recalling that he received nothing when he ingested Little Yellow's tail previously, to which Ruhua elucidated that the system requires the creature to be killed by the host's own hand, and consumed for the box to be granted. For smaller creatures that the host can swallow in one bite, there is a 100% chance of obtaining a box. However, for larger creatures that necessitate chewing, the chance of acquiring a box depends on luck. Even if the host consumes a whole toad, it might yield only one box if luck is unfavorable. Unexpectedly, Wu Song's luck defied expectations, as another chest materialized before them. This remarkable stroke of luck brought instant joy to Wu Song, who couldn't help but revel in the unexpected windfall. But somehow this mofo Ruhua couldn't just shut his trap for one second, trying to discredit my man Wu Song like that. 
A few moments later, Wu Song and Little Yellow found themselves utterly satiated, their stomachs so full that movement seemed like an arduous task. But despite the substantial amount they had consumed, only three boxes materialized, revealing the limits of Wu Song's luck. And with the option to open the boxes now available, Wu Song was somehow currently uninterested in exploring their contents, and so he decided to save them for later. But now that their feast concluded, a new challenge emerged. The remaining meat, a sizable chunk, posed a potential threat by attracting carnivores. The looming danger of being swiped to death by a formidable predator compelled Wu Song to contemplate a solution. Engaging in profound thought, a sudden idea illuminated his mind, sparking a gleam in his eyes. He contemplated burying the leftover meat to transform it into organic fertilizer. The concept mirrored a practice from his past when his mother buried dead fish beneath fruit trees in their garden. Initially ignorant of the purpose, his mother had patiently explained that this process allowed microorganisms in the soil to decompose the fish carcasses into carbon dioxide, water, and inorganic salts. These substances, in turn, were absorbed and utilized by the fruit trees, promoting lush growth and enhancing the flavor of the fruit. His late mother's insightful teachings now proved invaluable. However, a challenge emerged. Wu Song's currently flaccid vines lacked the capability to dig into the soil, so it seems like the only way for him to use his vines is to find a handy tool, like a shovel of some sort. But the question is, where can he find a handy tool in such a desolated place? But even with this, Wu Song couldn't afford to idle around, and so he called out Little Yellow's attention and asks it to help him find thick branches and flaky stones. He even morphed his vines to demonstrate precisely what he needed. But looking at the little lizard walk aimlessly, Wu Song couldn't shake off the worry that the lizard might struggle to comprehend his instructions. A short while later, Little Yellow returned, proudly presenting a collection of sticks and pebbles it had gathered. Expecting praise for a job well done, the little lizard was met with disappointment, as Wu Song expressed that the items were insufficient. Wu Song had been envisioning thicker branches, yet the ones presented were so frail that they broke with just a poke. Even the supposedly hard rock turned out to be brittle, reminiscent of a snowball. Recognizing the need for improvement, Little Yellow nodded in understanding. Determined to fulfill Wu Song's requirements, it scurried back to gather more, but the subsequent items were once again unsuitable for digging. Some were too flimsy, and the stones were disappointingly soft. To make matters worse, one even emitted an unpleasant odor resembling feces. Undeterred, Little Yellow, driven by the desire for praise, embarked on another attempt to gather the required materials. This time, however, the little lizard went overboard, returning with an entire log that Wu Song found too cumbersome to lift or move. The sheer size of the log left Wu Song astonished, questioning how Little Yellow had managed to procure something of such magnitude. With this, Wu Song found himself on the verge of losing hope, due to Little Yellow's apparent struggle to comprehend his instructions. But somehow, Little Yellow came with a clutch, as it given him a sharp bone fragment, and a broken arrow, with its head still intact. Upon receiving these items, Wu Song was struck with awe at their craftsmanship. Despite being damaged, he can't ignore the fact that it is pretty well made. This meant that the humans who are living here are more sophisticated than he thought. Still, with newfound weapon, excitement filled Wu Song once more, and with the prospect of facing another toad attack, he felt a renewed sense of readiness to confront the challenges that lay ahead. However, he couldn't have gotten this without Little Yellow's help, and so Wu Song decided to express his gratitude. He praised Little Yellow and handed it the broken bone. Little Yellow, visibly pleased with the praise, eagerly embraced the task at hand, ready to commence their work. But Little Yellow was just a lizard and lacked knowledge of manual labor. Wu Song took on the role of a patient instructor. He began teaching the basics of digging to the enthusiastic lizard, patiently guiding it until it became accustomed to the laborious task. Once Little Yellow had grasped the essentials, they continued their joint efforts without pausing for rest. In just a few moments, they successfully excavated a hole large enough to bury the leftover meat. With swift efficiency, they placed the meat underground and covered it with soil. As they finished, a noticeable shift in the aroma permeated the area. The scent of blood dissipated, indicating the success of Wu Song's plan to deter predators. Reflecting on the unusual ability to smell, Wu Song briefly pondered if plants possessed a sense of smell. However, he dismissed this trivial thought, prioritizing his focus on essential matters, and that is if the meat he tries to fertilize himself with was effective. But unfortunately, it didn't. Nothing has changed. Still, he doesn't want to make a conclusion yet, because there was still a possibility that it be because of the decomposing rate of the frog is just slow. 
so he just decided to wait for a few more hours to see a significant result. But now that he was just waiting, he shifted his attention to opening the chest he had acquired, so he signaled for Ruhua to come out, which Ruhua didn't hesitate to show his ugly ass. But before opening it, since Little Yellow showed time and time again that it was lucky in opening the chest, Wu Song asks his lizard friend what number of chest it wanted to open first, to which it immediately responded number two. Upon opening chest number two, Wu Song was astonished to find another B-rank plant gene. This gene had the unique ability to integrate itself into his stem and enhance thorn mutations. With this, Wu Song couldn't help but be delighted with the outcome, and so he patted Little Yellow's head and shower it with praise. Still, he was too excited to prolong this further, and so he immediately signaled to fuse with the new stem gene, which Ru Hua gladly took out at one yet again, and facilitate the fusion. And now, not only Wu Song's vines were thick, big and powerful, but they were also sharpened with thorns all around. After the fusion complete, Wu Song couldn't help but grin, as he witnessed the birth of the real lightning whip. Even Little Yellow was scared because of how menacing it looked. However, it wasn't merely about aesthetics. The transformation unveiled a significantly augmented damage capability for Wu Song's whip. The leaves were effortlessly torn apart simply by the whip's proximity, showcasing its newfound power. Empowered by this enhancement, Wu Song now exuded unwavering confidence in his ability to confront and defeat a toad directly. But since he still got a few more chests to open, he focuses on that, and asks Little Yellow to what open next. However, their luck seemed to have run out since they only got evolution points as a reward for the remaining chests. But this didn't bother Wu Song that much, as he understood how scummy the system already was. And rather than dwelling on the disappointment, Wu Song adopted a level-headed approach, choosing to focus on the positive aspects of what he had already acquired. With a pragmatic mindset, he appreciated the gains he had made, and resolved to concentrate on further improving them. To do that, he needed a certain subject, and that subject is none other than a big freaking toad, who was lured by Little Yellow, and as it got close, Wu Song whipped out his new vine, instantly injuring the toad as he wrapped it all over its body, but he knew that it wasn't enough. So Wu Song doubles down by slamming the toad on the ground. With this, the duo got to enjoy yet another successful hunt, and because of the rules of the system, Wu Song got another set of treasure chest, and seeing how a single toad could give him so much, he decided to hunt for big toads from time to time. After he was done eating, he was delighted to see a very rare occurrence as there were five treasure chests that appeared because of their feast. But knowing his luck, Wu Song decided to open just one of them. To his astonishment, a new B-rank gene had emerged from the chest. It was a sweet potato gene. Examining its information more closely, it revealed details about the properties of a potato root. However, lacking expertise in botany, Wu Song found himself perplexed by the information. So he seeked for some clarification to Ruhua, and asks for an explanation of the benefits of the sweet potato gene after fusion, which Ruhua promptly elucidated the advantages it offered. Initially, Wu Song had been burying uneaten food in the soil to decompose and serve as organic fertilizer, a process that was both time-consuming and wasteful. However, with the integration of the sweet potato gene, everything will change, as the sweet potato gene provided a solution to this dilemma, offering food storage capabilities. It could rapidly convert food into nutrients and store them in the roots. Wu Song initially thought this stored nutrition was meant to satiate his hunger, but Ruhua clarified its broader significance. As the stored nutrients had the potential to help him thrive, it can even quickly heal his injuries. Upon hearing such news, Wu Song's eyes immediately shines, as he resembled this gene to be akin like a red potion from a game, making him a legendary knight deserving of the title of protagonist. With this, he instantly decided to fuse with it. Surprisingly, it seems like nothing has changed, so Ruhua helped him realize what it was, telling him to eat the toad in front of him, with the thought of storing the toad instead of consuming it. Now that was clarified, Wu Song followed Ruhua's guidance, thinking hard about how he wanted the toad to be stored in his roots, and this proved to be helpful, as he witnessed several roots emerging from the ground, swiftly wrapping around the toad and completely submerging it as quick as he could imagine. And even though he saw it with his own eyes, Wu Song couldn't shake off the sense of disbelief it felt surreal, as he could vividly feel the roots encasing the food and pulling it into the soil, where it was then quickly decomposed and transformed into root to store nutrients. This newfound ability was incredibly convenient for Wu Song. He no longer needed to dig holes to bury food, and the fear of attracting carnivores by leaving leftover meat was eliminated. The gene had proven to be a game changer in simplifying Wu Song's survival strategy in this peculiar plant-based world. Seeing how thrilled Wu Song was, 
Ruhua revealed to him that he could further enhance this skill, as long as he practices it, and with time and effort, he could reach a point where controlling his roots became almost second nature, and the prospect seemed almost too good to be true. So it prompted Wusong to inquire whether the healing effects of this root could be likened to having an additional life, which Ruhua confirmed this possibility, but he reminded Wusong that he only have a single root for now. So if he wanted to achieve the desired outcome of multiple lives, he would need to dedicate himself to upgrading the root multiple times to strengthen its healing capabilities. With this clarified, he fought a larger opponent, particularly a red-bloodied serpent. But because of his thorns, Wu Song was at an advantage, as he easily prevents the snake's jaw to bite him off. After that, he used his vine and wrapped around the snake's whole body, and smashed it into the ground. And as it thought things wouldn't get much worse, Little Yellow emerged from the shadows, and dealt the final blow. With this, they had successfully killed one of the most biggest enemy they have encountered. Amidst their celebration, Wu Song became aware that the snake had injected venom into his vines. However, upon closer inspection, he realized that the venom held no detrimental effects for him. The only drawback was the damage inflicted on his vines. Fortunately, with his new ability, he swiftly regenerated and replenished his vines, which he really thought is quite good, seeing how fast it healed. Now that was settled, they enthusiastically started their feast. After a while, the rain began to pour, leaving Wusong with little choice. Seeing that Little Yellow was still feasting on the meat, he decided to bundle up his vines and create a makeshift cover. Little Yellow appreciated the effort, and after a few more moments, it was stuffed and snuggled up with Wusong. In the midst of this, Wusong felt a growing sense of belonging. Good food, unlimited resources, and a companion to share it all with. The only missing piece was a romantic partner, a girlfriend, as a virgin. This was a novel experience he hadn't encountered before. Surprisingly, he didn't have to wait long as he noticed luscious red lips approaching him. However, upon closer inspection, he realized it was Ruhua. With this, a wave of disgust washed over him. In response, he instinctively slapped his thorny balls onto Ruhua. And if Ruhua is the only option, he might as well never have a girlfriend. But still, with how ugly he looks like, a big-mouthed flower. It seems like his option is to find a big mouth flower as well, which he can't wrap around his mind to convince to do such a thing, since he was previously a human after all. With that, a month easily went by. But during this period, his progress was quite big, as he had fused with another thorn vine, and now he has three roots, which is equivalent to three life-saving potions. But even with this progress, the life of a plant could be a little boring, as his pastime is only to juggle his balls while waiting for Little Yellow to come back. To his surprise, this day was a little eventful unlike any other, as a human had appeared from the bushes. This was the first time he saw a human, so he was excited to realize that human really do exist in this world. And as a former human himself, he immediately tried to get its attention, shouting at it while he introduced himself. But as he does this, a grim realization struck him, and that he is now a big-mouthed flower, not a human. But still, he can't let such an opportunity slip by. So he gambled everything by trying to get the attention of the human in front of him. And since he still has his previous memories, he was confident that he could communicate with the human smoothly. And the fact that he doesn't know anything about this world, and he has so many questions he wanted answered, he was more than willing to do everything he can to get the man's attention. However, it became apparent that his voice couldn't reach the man, who continued with his tasks, seemingly unaware of Wu Song's attempts to communicate. Faced with this situation, Wu Song speculated that his small, flower-like head might be the reason for his voice not carrying far. Yet, upon closer observation of the man's activities, he realized that it might be a blessing in disguise that his attempts to get the man's attention failed. Because the man was there to harvest plants for medicinal purposes, and seeing the grass on its hand made Wu Song freeze in terror, as he is a plant as well. To make matters worse, the man wasn't content with just a single plant, as he uprooted another, and a sense of frenzy overcame him upon discovering a longevity flower in the vicinity, which is the main ingredient for refining longevity pill. With this, Wu Song couldn't help himself but feel worried as he is a flower as well, and he is relatively alone, making him stand out through the sea of grasses, and the only thing he can do now is hope that this man just regards him as a useless plant and just ignore him. However, things didn't unfold as he had hoped, as the man turned towards him, and contrary to Wu Song's wishes, the man noticed his presence. Nevertheless, confusion painted the man's face as he couldn't recall any flower resembling this rather unattractive specimen. To confirm his memory, the man consulted his book, only to find no records of such an ugly plant. 
Intrigued by the mysterious discovery, the man saw it as an opportunity to make a mark in herbal medicine history. Eager to examine the peculiar plant further, he contemplated digging it up for a more thorough study. However, as the man's hand drew near, Wu Song swiftly utilized his vines to snap back, prompting the man to retreat momentarily. But he just assumed that it was mere clumsiness, and the man's intrigue only deepened due to the plant's unusual nature. So instead of running away from the plant, he decided to just cautiously approach the ugly ass plant once again. Meanwhile, Wu Song grappled with an existential crisis. As his most potent attack had been effortlessly shrugged off, leaving him shaken, and the fact that the man didn't even realize that he wanted to hurt him had really taken a hard blow on his pride, and so he froze up in the face of seemingly overwhelming power and just accepted that he was just a fragile flower. Fortunately for Wusong, just before the man could pluck him out, another silhouette emerged from the bushes. Upon closer inspection, it turned out to be one of the man's companions. However, this companion seemed to be in a hurry, carrying a massive egg. Still, the brown-haired man attempted to communicate with the blonde companion first, but he was ignored. Clearly agitated and eager to escape from something, and seeing his buddy just casually idle around, the blonde companion shouted at the brown-haired man to run, because it turned out that while stealing the egg, he had been discovered by the female dragon. Upon hearing this alarming news, panic immediately spread across the man's face. The situation wasn't favorable, and in the distance, the silhouette of the female dragon was becoming increasingly apparent, glaring at them intensely. Despite the imminent danger, the brunette really had a chance of a lifetime here, so he tried to ask the blondie to wait a minute so that he could dig up the strange flower. Even Wu Song was taken aback by the man's dedication. Fortunately, the blonde companion managed to persuade the brunette to abandon such thoughts, emphasizing the urgency of fleeing from the approaching female dragon. In response to this, the brunette just gritted his teeth, and just planned to dig up the ugly plant at a later date. Unbeknownst to him, Wu Song had understood everything he said, so it became clear to Wu Song that he couldn't just let them go, or else his life would be at stake. And with the female dragon closing in, Wu Song whipped out his thorny vines, wrapping them around the herbalist and his companion, and the thorns easily latched onto their boots, causing them to trip. And despite the weight of the two men causing some damage to Wu Song, he didn't care, since his main concern was ensuring that these individuals wouldn't be able to pose a threat to him again. As a result, the two men fell hard to the ground, and the egg they had been carrying slipped from their grasp. But this delay was enough for the dragoness to catch up with the thieving duo, so as soon as it got close, it immediately seized them with its hands. However, these men turned out to be more daring than initially thought. Rather than screaming in fear, the blondie was excited to face the dragon head-on, wielding his sword. They managed to inflict an injury on the dragon, forcing it to release them. However, the dragon ain't a bitch either, as it had no intention of letting them escape so easily. So it opened its jaws wide, and tried to munch on them mid-air. And their fight continued beyond the hills, where Wu Song couldn't even see anything, what was happening. But with just a few moments later, only silence lingered in the air. One could only hope that this marked the end of encountering those thieving adventurers for Wu Song. Hit that like button and thanks for watching.